Messy Mon- Messy Mondays. Your girl show me. Your girl Marley Mar. Hey, happy Monday. Welcome to Messy Mondays, episode Messy Mondays. number 36. So I got a lot of text messages about episode 35. Yay, really? That's awesome. <laughs> And people definitely shared that their guilty pleasure, along with you and I, is mar- love at first sight. Love it. No, married, married at first sight. Married, married at, at first sight. Yes, sight. yes. How cool. Oh. And we thought we were like the only people out here watching this show. I think, I thought we were too. I think it's a real guilty pleasure, like just right. watching something happen before your eyes. I want to do a survey to see actually how many people would sign up for the show. Oh my God, that'll be awesome. I want to see how many people will actually, you know, take that risk that me and you may not be able or willing to take. Right. You know what would be great? Maybe if we can try to see if we can get one of the people that's been on it to see if they want to be on the podcast. I'm so down for that. Yeah, I think like I already that should know be what... like our mission. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you know someone who has participated at Married at First Sight, please reach out to Messy Mondays at Messy Mondays Podcast at gmail.com. Yes. We would love to speak to you. Absolutely. We want to interview you and dive in. That will be such a good episode. Be on the lookout for that episode. I, we're definitely doing that. Yeah. Um, it's great to be back. For sure. I don't know how the summer is looking over in Florida, but the rain out here is hitting hard. Well, you know that this time of year it is gets a little rainy because the humidity increases, but um, it is, it's back to normal South Florida weather where it rains once a day. <laughs> but... <laughs> Is it that afternoon rain, like where yeah. you know you can't go to the beach until after the rain? Exactly. It's, or when you know uh, my shift is about to end in two hours, so the rain will probably clear up by then. You know what I yeah. mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, I miss those Florida weathers. Aw. Uh, I mean, it's humid. It's very, very humid. But for the most part, I cannot complain because um, it, it, it still is one of the best climates to live in in the country. Straight up. It is. It is. It is. That's true. And here, if it rains for the day, it rains for the day. <laughs> so nothing we can do about that right That's you guys must have here. the most beautiful like forest like it has oh. to be amazing yeah it absolutely must. amazing and for my first time a couple weeks ago i went to my first music festival sasquatch which is out in the desert and driving that in between from going from the the forest yeah. And driving into the desert is the most beautiful scenic wow. view How ever. Nice. So if you guys How ever nice. come out here, taking that drive to head out the co- east is gorgeous. Absolute desert, but gorgeous. And it's hot as hell. Nice. Okay, <laughs> very cool. And and they do a lot of outdoor music things, I've, I've, I've noticed, out in the west. Yes. A lot of outdoor stuff. Yeah. Very cool. A lot cool. of outdoors. There's something that was very my first... special about that, about being in the... In nature and, and hearing music is beautiful. It is. And apparently I went to where I went to was a place called the Gorge. Um, and apparently like the acoustics, that's why they usually have an amphitheater out there because the acoustics that bounce off of like the walls and the desert and in between the gorge and stuff like that really echoes yeah. around. And it's absolutely beautiful. It's a lot of walking. It's a lot of hiking. That's the biggest workout I've received in a long time. <laughs> but... It's beautiful and it's worth it and fun. Yeah, I really want to go. Speaking of like the amphitheater thing, I know there's one in Denver that's really, really famous. The one that's the Red, Red Rock. Rock. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh my God, like bucket list. I want to see something that's out there. That's a hike also. Get your hiking shoes on for that one. That's a I hike think it's also. worth it. I think it's worth it's it. It's worth Just, it. The pictures alone look fantastic and beyond normal beauty. And those type of things, you can never really capture the beauty in the picture. So I can only imagine what yes. it must be like you know what i'm saying yes Cause yeah because my pictures look like, like nothing my pictures look like absolutely nothing compared to being in person exactly in those spaces it's like when i went to colorado springs i was like people really live here and these mountains are behind you it's so right? close it's just so beautiful like it's just like like a postcard and like i was blown away and it's something that i even when i tried to capture it on ig or snap or whatever it, it did not translate. no justice no no not at all so yeah, yeah, definitely. We need to keep adding to our bucket list too. We For need sure. to maybe we'll make a summer bucket list. True. And see all the places that we can make you to. Right. I always wanted to see every state. Like I still kind of have that goal. That's like well, something I would like to do. I actually like that idea of traveling first within your country before traveling to other countries. Yeah. Or at least Does mix that... it up. For sure. 
A little bit of mix, but like knowing, yeah, visiting every state, knowing every state. Yeah. You know, landing there, whatever experiencing a little bit and then going out and being international in a sense i think sometimes i think that's would be really cool i think sometimes people don't really want to appreciate the beauty that america is you know what i mean like we have mm-hmm. so much versatility in this massive grand country you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. like because of the fact that we were such a massive country like we are a huge country and people don't really realize that until you start looking at how small other countries are. You're like, oh, wow. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's like, you know, we cover something like as far up as Seattle, you know, with the Washington state all the way down to Southern California, to the Keys, you know, to like the Midwest. Like it's such a, the, all those places are all so different. And it's like, we have Surely, that all in yep. our country and we don't need a passport to go there. You could literally drive or fly there. With your driver's license and, I don't know, take advantage of USA, truly. Yep. Like, just like everyone ended up in Wyoming. <laughs> right. <laughs> For Kanye, which right. no one ever thought about, but people came back and said how amazing it was. Right, right. And, like, we would have never thought about anything about Wyoming prior I to I also this. heard, according to the Breakfast Club, because I don't want to start misquoting things, but that there was um, some complaints from the people who were own the establishment because they didn't think it was going to get quite as rowdy mm, they got a little too hood for them <laughs> they got hood they got hood they got hood <laughs> So, like, they basically, um, I guess, had to, like, pay a fee or some shit because they thought that it was going to start on time. Clearly, they don't deal with people of color. They must not know Kanye. (laughs) They must not know people of color. Every time you go to, like, a concert, you be waiting, like, an hour. You're like, yo, this is never on time. Never. And if you ever show up on time in my house when I invite you to something, then that's another (laughs) problem. Like, come on now. Let's be honest. My mom always used to be, like, the person who shows up on time is the only idiot. Oh and my god! And then we get food because she couldn't. Not that no, we loved people showing Your up on time. Your mom is ruthless. People, but she are, was like, she was never time. ready. The right way to do it is to be on time. I understand no. because I always give a time because I give people a buffer because I know people are not going to be there on time. Yes, I'm horrible with time, as you know. Yeah, I'm terrible with time. <laughs> but if I say eight, it's because it starts at eight thirty. You know what I mean? Because people always ooh. So you 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 twist it. I always you, do that. Okay. Because of the simple fact that number one, I live in South Florida, and everyone is always late here. Um, number two, <laughs> that is true. Straight like that. Everyone like, makes an entrance. In no, South it's just the way it is. They're like it's yeah. like literally, I have meetings that are professional meetings that people are like, "I'm on Miami time." And I'm like, "What? No. Bitch? It's forty five okay, no. minutes later." Like this that is, is crazy. not no. <laughs> no, no. Professional is one thing. Dude, I when swear. When it's just a gathering of things, like just friends, I'm always the late one. A professional, I'm all, like, I try to be my absolute best on time. Five minutes is max. Yo, people are never on time. Like, I literally have meetings that have to do with money sometimes, and people don't be on no. time. No. I swear to God. No, I'm not even joking. I'm not even joking. Like, no, that that's not cool. It's just what it is. So, like, you know, you have to kind of take that in consideration because I know that that's my environment and there's a lot of freaking traffic to get to where I live. Like, I always say a time that I know that it still gives you a half an hour window to kind of do what you got to do. Oh, now I know. Yeah, well, no, <laughs> not for you. I I'm going to give you two hours in advance. Be like, yeah, she starts at six, okay? And you'll show up I at don't nine. know what... It, yeah, exactly. Okay. I don't know why that <laughs> so there you go. I don't know. I am that person. You ever see those memes would be like, yeah, I'm getting ready, but the person's still like laying out by the pool or mm-hmm. some foolishness. I'm that person. I'll still be sitting there like, why am I not getting dressed? I don't know. What, <laughs> like, I don't know. It's terrible behavior. I just don't know why. But so the lady in Wyoming is going to charge them more or like. No, so. she was basically complaining. And she like she said that there was like noise violations and like things that they didn't anticipate. They, they probably just didn't expect the crowd to be quite so hood and then when they saw it translate they feel like oh i need to get my money back somehow because this is not what i was told like they probably felt Uh, like you know what i mean i'm not saying that's the facts but that's how i interpreted it they were just like very they were very thrown by the fact that number one it didn't start like at 9 p.m they thought it was going to be over by like midnight like some some randomness that didn't make sense for the type of event that it was well, all of y'all trying to throw a party in Wyoming, it won't. You won't be invited, or will be allowed to throw it anymore. 
That's what or, that sounds like. Or for those um, flyover states, like you taught us, they're called. Um, mm-hmm. Be prepared if you're gonna have a bunch of rappers coming out <laughs> to your state and throwing a job like a like an event. Real shit. Google the rappers before you rent it out to them. Yeah, straight up. Straight up. Be Imagine careful. if it was like a wild rapper. I'm not saying Kanye isn't wild, but you know what I mean. Wild, wild. Like a like a. What's that? The boy with the rainbow hair that's all over the place. Oh yeah, yeah I've yeah. never heard a song of his ever. I in refuse my life. to actually to be very honest. I've never heard anything, and I just keep seeing him everywhere. And I'm like, I've become that person. We've become those people that like those adults like back in the day would be like, yeah. Why "Are you listening to this?" Right. I like I found myself as like, "Why? What is this?" And I judge this is foolishness. And oh, I, I judge one hundred percent. Yeah, what? I ain't got no shame in judging either. <laughs> all I right, learn a lot as an adult. You do, and you also learn that a lot of this music is trash. No offense. Okay, so um, <laughs> we want to say thank you for those who listened to episode number 35. That was awesome. And the good thing about episode number 36 is that we have a- another messy story. Woo! Yes. How dope, how dope, how dope. All right, so you know how it works, guys. I'm going to read the story. Me and Marley are going to go over the information, and then we're going to say, you know, whether or not we agree or disagree. Let's see. Okay. Here it goes. Um, This comes from a female listener, and she goes, I recently started a new job in a new city. I have to drive about an hour and a half for this job. In my first two months of this job, I've been working on making friends. Um, I became really close to this girl named Pam. Pam and my new co-workers invited me out to a happy hour to celebrate our new project. While at the happy hour, I tried to pace myself, but that failed. As the night was going on, I started to get to know my co-worker, Martin. We were having some good laughs, stories, just talking. As the night went on, he kept buying me drinks. I accepted them as a nice gesture. Happy hour turns into late night, and from what I was told by Martin the next morning, I was unable to drive home, and I ended up sleeping over his condo. Um, I asked him if anything happened between us, and he said um, all we did was kiss, but nothing further. Now, um, I... I when we went to get when I went to get ready for work, I had to stop by Walmart and buy a shirt so I wouldn't look crazy wearing the same outfit I wore last night. <laughs> um, as I get to work, um, a few people were asking me how I was feeling, and I was worried. I wasn't sure how I carried myself that evening. Um, I later run into Ashley, and she completely ignored me. I see Martin again, and I ignore him because I think that something isn't right. I later find out from another worker, Martin and I had disappeared a few times and and that Pam was very upset over this because Martin and her had broken up two months ago, which is right when I started the new job. Um, They dated for about a year. I feel like shit and I don't want to be that girl. The girl who doesn't know how to act when she drinks. Martin did ask me out and Pam has not spoken to me in weeks. Should I explain to her um, and see what happens and not go on the date or just let it go? I don't want to be the office hoe. The end. (laughs) The office hoe. Everybody has one. Not, well, not a hoe. The office mover. I don't know. I, don't I know, know that there's say. always definitely the one office girl that's always trying to get looked at somehow. Like she bends over a little too much and like your <laughs> ass is out a lot. Or like you think you slick wearing a thong with a skirt that's up your you know what I mean? Like Or like the most inappropriate dress and you'd be like, Well, it's a exactly. little cleavage. There's a lot of cleavage coming out of It's there. a lot of cleavage. Like honey. Like, all you got to do is throw all the heels on. <laughs> no. You know what I, I know. mean? Well, see, that's a good... The Miami... In Miami, yeah. girls put on the full-on heels, not the work heels. Nah. Girls put on the full-on five to six-inch heels. Strappy. With strappy. <laughs> with, with like, the, the bodycon dress, the snatching dress for work as an office desk work. Yeah. Straight up. But it's up to the knee, so you know it's, it's appropriate now because the dress is up it's to the knee. It's just right, but the shit is mad tight. <laughs> and I've had moments, like, working in Miami, I just remember that. And I had to be like, these girls. Yeah. Like, they're, it's like full, like, it's a whole other level of dressing for work. It is. And it is. keeping up with that is a lot. It's a yeah, lot. keeping up with the Joneses is a lot of work out here, for sure. For sure. So, I can't recall where she lives, but... 
you don't want to be that person who walks around being the office hoe. How but, is she the office hoe, though? I mean, I did not gather that from this story. That she's the office hoe? That's, 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 that's harsh. It does, the office I, I, hoe? No. I think from what she was saying that people were asking her if she's okay. But what does that mean you're a hoe? They want to know if this guy raped you because <laughs> you were drunk. Guys, That's come true. on. They want to know if that this person took advantage of you and he just told you you guys kissed all night and you have to believe this motherfucker. Everybody else saw you leave with him. You clearly couldn't drive. You were drinking all night and they're like, chill. Should we ask, yo, is everything all right? Is everything good? That's true. And that's At the true. end of the day, because we all know we're all we're all adults here and sometimes things don't go the right way. You know what I mean? So you want to no. make sure that everything's okay. So I don't think that I would necessarily automatically think a woman is a hoe because she left drunk with one of the guys from the office. I mean, I would not. Me personally. That's, that's, that's a lot. Or is she asking if she's the office hoe because he asked her out on a date and the other girl used to date him for a year? I think that the most awkward moment in the world was when she found out that, that they used Martin to be. was like this that chick's would have her killed one me. friend's ex. Whoa, that would have killed me because you know, when you make those office friends, that's right. like your new starting of like, oh, that's the person you have lunch with. It's like that's your BFF. You leave. Yo, your, your work BFF is everything to you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And if you fuck up that relationship with the work BFF, your whole work experience can be absolute trash. Absolutely. Your work BFF right? makes work better. Uh, the person you can talk shit with. Yes. The person you could ditch with. Right. The person who can like do half of your work or split the work with you because they'll hook you, like, you know, like they want to get you out of there. Like work BFFs are real good, like worth keeping. So in my opinion, don't go on that date. If you want to keep the work BFF. Interesting. Interesting. But you already kissed them. <laughs> that doesn't mean anything. <laughs> A couple times. But I mean, that doesn't mean anything. She doesn't even remember half the fucking night. That doesn't mean anything. Um, I don't think that she should throw herself in the line of fire for this friendship yet when at, when Pam hasn't even given her an opportunity to speak. Like, it's like... That's true. At the end of the day, I understand where Pam is coming from. And trust me, I must only imagine how she feels. She's like, yo, the one time I'm nice and I bring this bitch, right? <gasps> That's the one time she got to fuck with the dude that, you know what I'm saying? Like, what is the bad luck? That's a, back, that's a backstabbing kind of move. Like, like, I get it. I get what you're saying. Yeah. You're nice to someone. Yeah. You're open arms. You greet them. They're new at work. You become that, like, oh, come sit, you know. Let yeah, me show yeah, you. yeah, yeah. Come, come. come I got you. Come, Let's come, get come, lunch here. It's my good. You know what I'm oh saying? Oh, my God. <laughs> let me tell you all the, let me tell you who to dip, who not to talk to, and who to talk to. Yes. Or be that bitch is straight stuff. crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, like, this. ignore her. Right. Or, like, whatever. Here's where the office supplies are. Yep. And then... Or show me yeah. how to take PTO. And that's be like, yo, I'm going to show you right now. And that's your friend, son. Show me how to use this PTO. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I get it. I get what you're saying. I just yeah. feel like she was being nice. And it's like, I get Pam 100%. Because it's like, damn, man. Like, the one chick is... And it's like, you know in your heart, like, you can't 100% blame her. Because, you know, Martin is probably cute. Because you used to date him. So, it's possible. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But then again, no matter how logical you want to feel or think, it bothers you. It just bothers you. You know what I yeah. mean? It's like it doesn't yeah. even if it doesn't make sense. Even if it's been two months that you broke up with him because you was being stupid, but you still not over it a hundred percent. And it's like it's, it doesn't make any sense when you're tight. <laughs> <laughs> it right? Yeah, I got it. And she's definitely not over him. If it was just like. The day you started is probably the day they broke up or some foolishness like that. I mean, she's not over it clearly because she's not talking to you. <laughs> like, Yo, to ignore, do you know what it is to ignore someone at, in an in office space that you work in? Especially you ever have like, like a those very awkward? intimate office space. Yeah. And a lot of workspaces now are like shared workspaces where like, you know, you kind of just share all these desks and cubicles and like common areas. So and everything I is like only, glass. Yeah. Yeah, you already know. We know, <laughs> right? So you can't avoid nobody or nothing. And like you know, you're walking down the no hallway. You, no, <laughs> not even that. Where like you're walking down the hallway and you have to like smile and greet everyone you run into right. in the hallway, like that. Like that is awkward if she's ignoring you down those hallways. Like that's major. 
But the whole office saw you leave with him, so everybody knows they were together because they were together for a year. So everybody knew them as the office couple, and now he's already messing with you. Look, this whole thing about working and dating, I think this is my issue with it. It's like when the when the next party moves on, which is rightfully their 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 right. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like they're allowed to do that. Mm-hmm. So it's like when they move on at the same job. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> not fun, man. Not yeah, fun. we've had that conversation before. We've had that, that conversation. I don't think that I would recommend dating at work. However, however. You're traveling like crazy. You have a very limited social life now because you have to drive. Eventually, you're probably going to move to where your job is. Yeah, that's eventually. True. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like because if if you're making money there and things go well, your life is going to be you know it's going to make more sense. So these people that you're developing a friendship with at the job are really probably going to be your social circle of some kind. They're going to be your new crew in that new area that you move into. Yeah, for the most part. Much like most of us now as adults, that's where we make our friends. We make our friends at work. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It is Mm -hmm. what it is. So same thing comes to dating. Like if this chick is always in a car driving, she said two hours, I think her commute was. When is she going to meet a guy? True. Is at work, most likely. And like people marry people they meet at work. Yeah. I'm not saying that Pam is not a fantastic girl. I'm sure she's great because you guys clicked. And you're obviously a stand-up chick because you care enough to even ask if you're being a bad person instead of just doing whatever the fuck you feel like it. And that's really dope. But honey, if you over 30, (laughs) if you found this dude, there ain't no time, there's no room for friends. (laughs) Just let that shit go. Let that shit go, go man. And I'm sorry. And I'm not trying to be un, you know, un. How do I say this? Lacking compassion towards Pam. I don't want to be yeah. like lacking compassion towards her because I get it. But at the end of the day, you can't force somebody to be your friend. You can't force someone to like you. Like if this chick already don't fuck with you, like if you feel it, Martin, I guess try to talk to him. Go on a date. I see what you're saying. Yeah, no, I get it. Because you can't make arrangements for someone you don't know. No, exactly. Like you can't make, you can't rearrange your life or correct things or do something because of someone else's feelings. Someone you don't actually fully know. Right. They were kind to you and nice to you. You met them well. They mean well. But what if Martin's the man you marry? What if? What if he's the man that you end up having kids with? He could have been something. So I get that in that sense. But also you don't want to have, you don't want to burn any bridges, I guess. Right. Right. With the girl who introduced you to everything. going to become your supervisor or some shit. Whoa. You got to go to HR. she petty now? You better go to HR and be like, look, there's a conflict of interest in our relationship. So it is not conducive to a productive work environment for her and I to be partnered together. And most companies, you need to yeah. Be real. Most, yeah, most companies won't permit people who are dating in the same, like, I guess, department. department. You right. have to be in separate departments and separated mm-hmm. from each other. So that may happen if you decide to go on that date or start dating yeah. Martin. Yeah. If it gets any further than that. Or, okay, okay. Let me, let me give you an even better answer, okay? All right. Go with Martin. Very low-key. Go on a date. Don't make that shit public. Don't go to places where everybody in the job is going to be at. Don't make your date, like, the company fucking happy hour day. No. Like, do something privately. <laughs> okay. Away from work. Maybe even tell Martin, is he willing to drive? The two hours to your town, or oh, somewhere or outside, outside of where the job of, is, exactly, or meet halfway. Like, see how how into it Martin is too. If he's telling you you just come over and watch Netflix, then honey, you're a woman that you're an adult. Now you got to make a decision for you yourself. You all know what Netflix and chill. Is. Exactly, that's something completely <laughs> different. But if he's saying you, I want to chill, let's hang out, let's whatever. You know, give him a little bit of a of a incentive to get out of that vicinity and say, I live far. You know, blah blah blah. See if you even vibe with this guy, period, in a sober mind before you even lose sleep over this. That's true. In a sober mind. Right. That's the other part. You don't even know sober if you even like Martin. Exactly. So it's like don't lose sleep over this guy yet when you don't really know. So you hang out with him and that's my opinion. If you see that there's a real chance there, I, you know, don't stop living your life. Right. 
Mm-hmm. Do what you do, but keep it outside of work as long as you possibly can. That's truly the best advice I think you should give anybody. Like, don't start making shit public until you two figure things out, right? Fine. Yeah. Then, if you feel as a woman that you want to approach this woman, Pam, that you're going to have to speak to and see all the time, and you feel inclined as a woman that you should tell her, listen, this isn't personal. I didn't know. You know what I'm saying? That's true. She My didn't know. Bad. She had no idea. And, but I do want to tell you that I do appreciate everything you did when I first started working here that did not go unnoticed. And I'm sorry that our relationship is no longer. Like, just be a woman. Yeah. Who's not going to appreciate an honest apology? Right? That's, if, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Unless, I don't know. If nothing works with Martin, let that shit go. Like, you know, let what I mean? that shit go. I like your approach where you could still, if, if, again, if you're interested in seeing Martin, seeing Martin in a sober mind, a certain, a sober space, yeah, meet halfway somewhere else, see what it's really like. And Pam don't gotta know. She don't, you know. Right. I mean, you can share with her what you yet. want. Yeah. And if she's over him, she'll start talking to you and just be like, hey, this is what it is, whatever. Um, but I do understand the feeling of kind of like hurting your workspace friend. Absolutely. Because work is like where that you spend sucks. most of your time. Yeah, it sucks. So it really sucks to be like having a little bit of drama or this kind of like issue yeah. in that space. Because I mean, you spend eight hours or more of your day with people, you know, outside of your home. These are the people you spend the most time with. Yeah. So it depends whether you want to have the social life of dating or your workspace be really positive and you have like a good friendship or kind of camaraderie within the workspace yeah yeah it it does a really i'm really interested in knowing do you guys work like in a in a six room a six person room <laughs> and all six of you sit there you know what i'm saying in the same like, room together yeah <laughs> that is awkward you know what i mean that's like, super awkward yeah yeah that's super awkward. If you work, yeah, if you work in a WeWork space and that shit got full glass all over, y'all Shout got out problem. to WeWorks. I say that because I actually literally just finished working in a WeWorks building and that's exactly what I'm thinking. I'm thinking, I'm picturing myself in that environment. I'm like, damn. For you one of these people like, to have straight beef with you in that space is not a good feeling. Come on now. You can't even have like the bubble guts in a WeWork space without <laughs> like- <laughs> That's hilarious. Come on now. And it's funny, you, you do mad eye contact with people all the fucking time in that bitch. Oh, damn. <laughs> and you don't even know which office space they have and who they are. It's just random people constantly in those spaces. But with, best of luck yeah. to our Gina. Um, and follow up with us and let us know yeah, man. what you that decided really to what route you went upon. And if you did the date idea, we would really love to know how that date went. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah like is he worth it yeah right like was right. it even was it even anything come out of that or ask him you know what's up with Pam you know what I'm saying what if that breakup was really bad right like what happened I didn't know let's just get this out the way let's talk about it now you feel me like I don't want to yeah I don't want to find out later like I have to find out but it would be worse if Pam and him had a really bad breakup like a devastating, terrible yeah, breakup. Like he destroyed her. L- that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I know. Damn, right? Like, no. should she have that talk with her then before going on this date? Like, you get what I'm saying? Like, yeah. and that's what I'm saying. If she's ignoring you and you want to have a talk with her to explain yourself from that evening, you might learn things you don't want to know about Martin and how that breakup happened, right? right? How things ended. It could have ended terribly. It could have ended terribly. But but sometimes when a relationship is terrible between two individuals, it doesn't mean that every other relationship after that for that individual is going to be terrible. No, of course. But it still makes it a more awkward situation. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, if you like Martin, don't have the conversation with him. Like, that's the truth. That's the truth. You have to make a decision at this moment of whether you're going to continue being 
the person that's seeking a friendship with Pam or a person that's seeking an opportunity with Martin. Like, you have to make that decision right now. There's no blurred line here. There's no way that she's going to be able to do both, honey. No way. You got you to gotta choose one or the other, honey. Because if she decides to be Pam's friend for real, like, then she understands that girl code is, I'm not going to start smashing your ex right in front of you. Like, that's wild. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, that's just girl code. So it's like, if you're going to, if you really be like, yo, I'm really going to be this chick's friend, like, this chick is my friend, son, like, you know, then, then you're going to have to just say, all right, Martin, ain't nothing. Like, boom, I was drunk. <laughs> and I had a good time. That's it. You know what I'm saying? And this condo's nice. So... <laughs> Don't say that. That's terrible. <laughs> no, let me stop. You see? That's, that's well, how people hate women. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, we wish you the best. Wish you the best, honey. To Gina. Choose a lane. Hit us back up. Choose a lane. Yeah. Changing lanes out here. Um, and let us keep keep us updated on this one. Yeah. So I think this will, this will turn to be an interesting turnout of events. It might be an interesting turnout. And you're a good girl. You're a nice person for even yeah. caring to ask. Yes. Because mm-hmm. you're, you're definitely, you can relate to being a good person because you're talking about how do I approach her. Yeah. And yeah. you don't want to be looked at as the office hoe. Right, right, right. <laughs> it right. means you care about yourself in some yeah, sort of way. Yeah, she cares. She cares. So you had a good night out. All right. If you have any stories or anything you would like to share... Email us at MessyMondaysPod at gmail.com with your messy stories. Every story is anonymous. And, um, yeah, email yeah. us at any time. And we would love um, to even hear what you guys think after the messy stories. And when we post, you know, the our little flyers or whatever, just let her know, hey, I really didn't agree with what Gina <laughs> did. Or Martin should just do this. Like, you guys are, feel free. Please, to like, and they us. have been listeners have been very vocal under our comments. Sometimes exactly, exactly. When it comes to certain things, so we appreciate that. Yeah, for sure. Moving on into small little tidbits of pop culture life. Yeah. Um, in recent news, we knew that Kim Kardashian was meeting with the president. Yes, remember that picture, guys, where Donald Trump was cheesing super cheesing. hard. <laughs> Cheesing. And you know what? Shout out to Kim for keeping a straight face. Yeah, but that, that's, that's, that's the her Kanye training. That's the... <laughs> Cause he, no, but Kanye went cheesing when he came out with Donald Trump. Yeah, yeah. Remember he's that? the one who taught Kim, her how to stop smiling in pictures. That too. Mm-hmm. Damn. Can you imagine having a husband that, like, picks out your clothes for you? That, I don't think I can handle. That Cleans out your closet? Thing? Well, I mean, if I don't know, I don't know. If you're buying me like a bunch of beautiful designer clothes and giving me a closet full of it, I'm pretty sure that no. any girl would like that. You're getting everything that's nude and plain. And have you seen her in spandex all the time? Like, I actually really like the way Kim dresses. I, mm, it depends. I do. Because it depends I'm, I'm on one day. of those girls that I really am into solid colors and I'm into black big time. I love black. I can work black every day, all day. So I like, I mean, I like color blocking, but like at the end of the day, black is like really my thing. So it's like, it's hard for me not to say it's not fly to have some really pointy, beautiful heels on with like a very beautiful black leather skirt and like a fucking beautiful black blazer. I think that she looks hot. Yeah, but she'd be wearing all nude and beige, which I love nude and beige because it's the only colors I get my nails done in. Yeah. But that's all he puts her in. He cleared out her closet. And just has her in. Yeah, but that happened. A Yeezy looking model the whole time. That happened a while ago. And like, she's been doing this for a minute. This this look that she has. And I think that a lot of people are influenced by Kim Kardashian. Oh, yeah. A lot. She's freaking gorgeous. She's gorgeous. But it's like a lot of people say they hate her. But then almost every girl I know kind of looks like this bitch now. It's like (laughs) some way, somehow, you're doing something that she does. Something Kim on you, yeah, yeah. Something Kim inspired, yeah. But shout outs to Kim keeping a straight face in that picture because I saw in an interview though. Um, she and had shout out to the discussion. president always being orange consistently. Yo, if that's one thing he know how to do, is being, <laughs> is stay is orange, being, man. Staying orange, <laughs> yes. God, and missing your eyes, and then like you know what you can see like the whole white of his yeah. eye around. Yeah. Like yeah, you're consistent in that for once. Um, but mm-hmm. definitely shout outs to Kim for 
you know, people judged her a lot. And I saw an interview with her where she kind of explained where she has grown out of a lot of things, Mm -hmm. which we all do, right? We all grow out of kind of certain lifestyles or things, things you used to do in the 20s. You don't do now. Right. And so she said, I like to spend, I, I appreciate now spending more of my time instead of shopping, spending 10 grand on helping someone else. I can respect and that. So, and, and you can, I can definitely respect that. Yeah. And though, although they haven't been very vocal, and yes, she backed up her cousin and, I mean, her husband in the ridiculous words that he says, and she tries to like clean up <laughs> all yeah, that yeah. that's happening on the Twitterverse. She's actually doing something that she's proud of, that we can be proud of and appreciative of, you know, that is helping others in need. Right. And those who aren't getting the, don't have the money to handle things like this. So she had been on Twitter and saw this case about a woman named Alice, um, Alice Marie Johnson, who was sentenced life in prison for a non, for first time non-violent offense, drug crime. So apparently she was a part of a ring, a drug ring kind of thing. Okay. Um, it doesn't specify exactly what she did or how she, you know, what was her role in it, but she was a part of the ring. Probably, right. I'm assuming she's just like a I think a mule. Um, from a clip that I saw of her crying prior to, you know, all of this stuff going on. I mean, I mean, prior to the celebration, like they showed mm-hmm. like a little interview or something with her. I think I didn't, I don't remember exactly that she mentioned that she was doing like a one-time job, I believe. Yes. Um, with like a, a, a loved one or a boyfriend. It was one of those things. And like, it's, it's just a bad decision type of thing. And it ended up being life. Yeah. So at 24, she relocated to Memphis where that's where she was uh, tried and convicted on federal drug crimes. She is a mother of four and a grandmother of six. Um, while in prison, she worked, she published a book, uh, or she published, or she's a published writer, an ordained minister, and got her GED, which is great. Wow. Um, so she served 21 years out of this life sentence already. And she said her personal life hit rock bottom after divorcing her husband, losing her youngest son to a motorcycle accident, filing for bankruptcy, losing her house. She got in- involved with a group of people transporting cocaine. Mm. And so she was arrested with along with the other 15 others, convicted, later convicted of conspiracy to sell cocaine and money laundering. She said she never actually sold the drugs and said she was a working, a telephone mule, mm-hmm. passing messages between the people. Wow. That's like, isn't that amazing? You're not physically touching any of this. And you can still be, like, I'm, I'm saying, like, it's like, you're not physically touching these drugs. You're not doing these Dude, drugs. It's not that. Life, but, though? Life plus 25 years. But that's in federal very, prison. very harsh, harsh. For her harsh, first harsh, harsh. offense? But it's, it's like, even if it, if it, like, I don't know. What what state was this? Uh, Memphis, Tennessee. Mm, I'm sorry. I don't want to sound like an ignorant northerner. But <laughs> as soon as I hear Tennessee, I just think of some prejudiced racist shit. Because I'm sorry, I don't, you know, want to stir the pot for something that I don't know facts on. But it's like, that's a pretty crazy... I've heard of people doing way worse and getting even nothing. here in Miami and getting like fucking five, eight years. Like, seriously speaking. And it all depends like, on your judges. And you have to... And that's where a lot of people need to start taking... That's where education becomes important and moving yourself up in certain spaces in certain areas to be an effective person because there's some judges on there who this judge might have been some old ass judge who got some old ass stamp, you know, right. moral and standards and doesn't think of things as a first time offense life that doesn't even equate. I don't think he cared clearly at all. That's terrible. That's terrible. She spent and, 21 years, over 21 years. So but and, and I'm not saying that what she did was okay, because when you break the law, you take the risk of going to jail. Unfortunately, of that's course. what happens when you break the law. You, we all, that's why we follow the law, because we don't want to go to jail. You know, It's just to create order. So I know that she made a mistake, and I get it. But 
because rapists get five years, like, I feel like... <laughs> Nothing. Tu me entiende? Like, it's like... Yeah. I, that's what... I'm like, you're on the phone just passing a message. It's not... I don't know. It's just, I think that's crazy. How much cocaine was this? Is this like Pablo Escobar cocaine? You know what it I mean? It might have been. There was, 15, there was over 15 people arrested. It was a large ring. Okay. Of folks. From, from this article. So, I'm sure the, the ring of, you know, cocaine and things like that, the group was pretty large. But her role in it is a, a minimal role, in mm. my opinion. No, I agree. I and agree. a first time, non-violent, you ain't kill nobody. Right. And Or physically drugs. harm anyone. And, like, and, yeah. with your own hands. You know what I'm saying? So, she's 63 years old now. She's a grandmother. And Kim Kardashian went up to the president's house, to the White House, and had a meeting with him. Mm-hmm. And it took some days before he actually decided to actually pardon her, which was interesting because he, he even announced that he was trying to pardon Muhammad Ali, but Muhammad yeah. Ali has been pardoned <laughs> and never got in trouble. So you can see where this person needs more discussing one-on-one in person with. Yeah. He's not a person who actually knows information. Like, he's right. not, like, well filled with real information um but he did pardon her and she was able to be with her family now wow which i think is amazing i think it's amazing that um someone's gonna find a way to make this a negative and to talk badly about kim kardashian like that's what's really amazing because i don't think you wrong with what she did like i don't think think people can i don't think there's 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 nowhere here you can make this bad for Kim. I mean, you can't talk bad about Kim. I right. don't see it. I don't see the hold that people can say. Like, she actually put in work. All her, whatever money. Can mm-hmm. you imagine, like, what they had to pay these lawyers and things like that? And there's a group. Guys, look up. There's this. It's there's, just giving a fuck about name. somebody that's not related to you is a really big thing. Yeah. But for years, there's been these groups of lawyers who do, um, what's the word when they do it for free? Pro bono. Pro bono. And looking up old cases and right. finding, you know, Cold where cases. the mistakes, finding where these mistakes are, where these people mm-hmm. were in, incorrectly uh, convicted. Right. Wrongly convicted. Right? Or uh, wrongly convicted and, in, in, and are moments like this serving life sentences for something that's nonviolent. Oh, my God. Fun fact. The reason I started listening to podcasts, you just triggered a memory for mm-hmm. me. And for those of you who like this subject matter, um, I started listening to Serial. Yes. And um, that's how I got into the world of podcasting. That's how I got into listening mm-hmm. to them and thinking that podcast was the coolest thing since sliced bread. So um, shout out to Serial. For those of you who haven't <laughs> listened to it. That is an amazing. Season one is better than season two. Season one is definitely better. Um, it's very up your alley if you enjoy you know, learning about people who are wrongfully convicted in the process. And what do you do to resurface something super cool? And that's coming out in the HBO documentary, also. Very so, awesome, very yeah. awesome. Because they made they had a large impact. Yeah. Um, but it's great to see people putting in this work for doing things for others who can't do for themselves. Like this woman had no other. Like, if it wasn't for Kim mm-hmm. seeing her case, she would still be there. I think she would still just be there. Absolutely, no, no doubt. In the, there was there was no other the way world. to go. She was so blessed. That Kim um, stumbled upon this situation that is unbelievable. And she you never know what you grateful. find on Twitter. She will forever be grateful. And I I commend um, Kim Kardashian for still, even though people always sh- come at her, like she always still ends up doing something that makes her stand out. I feel like yeah. she does do that. And I don't believe that this was a publicity stunt. I think that there's she no stuff used for this. her yeah. power to get something really good, and how can you be mad at that? You know what I'm saying? How many meetings do you think Kim's gonna start having? Because she <laughs> says she's gonna continue doing things. Oh, like how this. many celebrities are gonna use this power to start talking to the president? Because the celebrity in chief loves to have celebrities. <laughs> celebrity in chief. No, but right? so, yeah, but it's just that's what I'm saying, like. Right now, we follow celebrities more than we follow our government. Right now. We follow them on Instagram. We listen to what they think. We care about their opinions. Look what happened when Kanye had an opinion. Oh, my God. You know what I'm saying? So, it's like, 
it's to the point that they have more political influence on us than our senators and our governors and our mayors because we don't even know half the time the name of the freaking mayor of the city you live in. Like, I'm being Not honest. Sure. Unless mm-hmm. you live like in a major metropolis like New York City that the mayor truly has a job that's like crazy. No offense <laughs> to the mayors of every other state. I mean, every other city. It's, you know what I'm saying? It's not the same. You know yeah. what I mean? So it's like, I, I, I sometimes think that we might be seeing the beginning of something different in this country um, because of the simple fact that there's more of a, of a ideology with celebrities and this, like, this 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 need to be obsessed and to admire that we have as humans that celebrities fulfill that for us so it's like we now have this thing that's greater than us that we look at and it's like so awesome and your life is awesome and you're pretty and you're this and you have money so it's like now that's our fascination right Mm -hmm. if those people start using that obsession that we have towards them to create a better america quote unquote Mm -hmm. it might work not sure. That's right. like, and I like the fact that Oprah, I hate the whole idea that the people want Oprah to run for president. And I like the fact that Oprah knows that she's more impactful not being in the political world and more outside of it. Just like Kim. I don't know why more, people... You have more availability. And I never thought about Oprah being president. Right. Because no one wants anyone <laughs> who is a celebrity as president. Right. Even having Arnold Schwarzenegger as your governor in California didn't make sense to me. Made me uncomfortable. <laughs> like, like, made no sense of how you yeah. guys even got there. And that's where people don't know how to foresee how to separate what a celebrity is and what a hum- like a person outside of that celebrity world is. Because you don't know what they're for. You don't know what they, what they actually vote for, what they actually do on their everyday. But I like how Oprah worded where she can knows that she can be absolutely more impactful for people, for anything, for anyone outside of office, because there's limitations when you're in office, mm-hmm. right? Things got to be passed. You got to get voted on where she can just go ahead and do and say, Miss Kim, Kim can take this opportunity and make something happen for someone and be right. impactful in that sense. You know, what's interesting. Um, I, I'm pretty sure you still haven't seen the Harry and Meghan movie. I'm sure. No, you and I know I'm, you I want know me you, to see it. Yeah. Cause you would have said <laughs> something by now. I know that. So that's how I know you haven't seen it. It's on my but, list. <laughs> no, definitely. And um, one thing that, you know, of course, there was an agenda for us to like Megan and for us to like Harry because the movie was meant to be positive. So we're not saying mm-hmm. that we don't get that. You know, mm-hmm. obviously it was meant for them to look good, you know. But um, one thing that I thought was really nice was that they kind of wrapped up why Megan decided to leave the show Suits. Um, and they, oh. they put it part of the movie because as she... Um, was inspired by a scene that, in a way that showed her that she has such a huge influence and such a large reach now because she's known in the whole world because of her now marrying this man that she just loves, Mm -hmm. that she looked at it like, I will sacrifice my comfort zone of working, you know, on my show and... And just doing my thing. And Her I'll regular life, up, yeah. Right, and I'll live over there and really use this power for something. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Which is dope. And I think that if she does do that, I think that it's going to be beautiful. I because think so, she's, too. A, she's already changing what it looked like to be a royal, which I think mm-hmm. is really beautiful in, in an English yes. sense. And I think that when they have children... Those royal children are going to be gorgeous and they're going to be a different version of England because England is mixed and versatile. It's not only very white like people may have thought back in the day. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think it's beautiful. She'll have a different impact. And yeah, again, happy that Kim is using her celebrity, her influence for something positive and putting the word out there for that. Keep going, Kim. I'm with it. Keep going. Um, and that, I think... Oh, lastly, the only other T-bit that I got is that Black China looked pregnant by that 18-year-old. But we'll keep following oh, that. And Beyonce's <laughs> butt was all over the internet. Child. And someone wrote a comment like, oh, y'all were hating when Kim did it, but when Beyonce does it. And I'm like, 
how often do we really have Beyonce's ass? Kim's First body. Of all, we know Kim's body everywhere. We done with Kim's body. We've been seeing that shit. Like, okay. We was there building it with her. Like, we've seen everything. <laughs> Guys, Beyonce gives us tidbits and leg. She got booty shorts on, but. I ain't never seen on? this. I ain't never seen this. Now, Jay do look awkward and old daddy. Kind of look good. He do look old. He's almost he's almost 50. But he look, but some 50 year olds is getting it out here. Like, come on. Like it is, it is vegan season right now. Like people are like, you're looking young as hell, and like <laughs> who else is fifty? It looks way. good. Um, a lot of people. I mean, I'm aside from women, I'm trying to think of men. Men, okay, this guy, um, the guy from uh, uh, NCIS, uh, the Shamar Moore. I think he's up there. Is he? Shamar Moore is not a, a spring chicken. Okay, <laughs> he is not. That's number Hold one. On. Um, who else is still looking mighty decent? Most of these athletes that like are becoming ESPN <gasps> people. Shamar Moore is forty eight. Look at that. Shamar Moore is forty eight years old. Enough said. Look how he looks. Well, him and Jay Z have lived two different lives. Because <laughs> Jay is forty eight also. Jay is forty eight also, and they lived yeah completely different lives. I will say that. Right. That just shows you you can go two different directions. Um, Idris life. Alba is probably up there because he has an old child. Jamie Foxx is up there. He's still in shape. Um, a lot. Damn, of you just throwing the names out though. I'm telling you. So I'm not saying that Jay needs to look like anything because she loves him. It doesn't matter. But it's just that he did look old. I agree. Jamie Foxx is fifty. Psst, look at that. And he looks good for fifty. He, he does. does. He, he does. does. I can. I can see. If that 50-year-old man came and hollered at me, I'd be like, oh, oh okay. <laughs> well, now. Okay. Who was the other? Oh, Idris Alba. Yeah. 50, 45. 45. Yeah, you know, they say black don't crack, so. <laughs> <laughs> but shout outs to J and B, and um, they both look good, though. Those pictures are beautiful. Yeah. So... Oh, I think saw Beyonce's 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 butt was perfection. I thought she perfect. Was beautiful. Just when she even has those shorts on, I'd be like, yeah. I can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, she is perfect. And twins came out of there? Come on, guys. Right. Come on. The queen bee herself. Well, <laughs> if you have a messy story, email us at messymondayspod at gmail.com. Also, follow us on Instagram. You can follow me at lovemarley underscore. And you can follow show me. At S-H-O-M-I underscore E-N-T. This was a great episode. Let us know your thoughts your about girl, this. Your and um, we'll be back next week. Yes. Thank you so much, everybody, for listening. <laughs> Have a good one. Monday Mondays.